library for Juana. The story we're going to read is written by Pat Mora and illustrated as well by a lady named Beatrice Vidal. So they both shared in writing and illustrating, which is unique. Usually you just have one person doing both or one person doing either. But this time they're both doing both. This is the title page because it has the title on it. A library for Juana, the world of Sor Juana Ines. Juana Ines called her mother. What are you doing? Juana closed a big book. Her grandfather, Abuelo Pedro, was always reading. Here in his house near Mexico City in Nueva España, he had stacks of books everywhere. Juana liked to make a nest with his books all around her. She opened them, turning the pages and looking for pictures. She was too little to read, but she wondered what all the words said. Juana was born many years ago in 1648. Why was three-year-old Juana's favorite question? Why do volcanoes smoke? Juana asked when she played outside and looked at two mountains puffing white smoke. Mama, why are leaves green? She asked when she collected wildflowers by the river. Juana liked the soft and thorny roses by her house best. With her fingertips, she stroked their furled petals and touched the prickly thorns. She smiled. Their sweet redness was awesome. Juana even sang rhymes to the roses. Rosa hermosa, Rosa hermosa. She played with the sounds when she skipped down the dirt road saying, Luna cuna bella estrada. One morning, Juana's big sister said, Juana Inez, I can't play with you today. Why, asked Juana. I'm going to learn to read at our neighbor's house, said her sister. I'm going to read books like Abuelo. Me too. I want to go with you too, said Juana Inez. Mama, I want to learn to read. Please. But you are too little, Juana Inez, her mother said. Every day, Juana and her mother watched her sister leave for school. One morning when her mother was busy, Juana followed her sister, hiding carefully behind the trees and bushes. When the big girls went inside, Juana stood on her tiptoes and peeked in the window. She saw the girls reading and writing. The next day, Juana again followed her sister to school, but she didn't hide. She walked up to the teacher and said, Senora, I want to read. Por favor, will you teach me? The big girls all giggled at such a little student. So the teacher looked at Juana carefully. Finally, she said, yes, you may come to school, Juana but you must study and behave. Wow. I am quiet like a turtle, said Juana. First, you must learn your letters. A, B, C, D, said the teacher. Why, asked Juana. We make words with letters. Look, R, O, S, A, Rosa. Juana Ines looked at the letters for Rose and saw soft red petals. At home, she wrote her letters again and again. She started reading and started writing her rhymes too. Do you want me to write a song for your birthday, Mama? I will say, you shine like a beautiful star, una estrella bella. Or maybe that you smile like a pretty rose, una rosa hermosa. Yes! Mia mama es una estrella bella. Mia mama es una rosa hermosa. For lunch, Juana Inez liked to chew cheese slowly with warm tortillas. Don't eat that cheese, Juana Inez. People who eat cheese aren't very smart. The cheese lumps in their brains, said a friend at school. Hmm. That day she said to Mama and Abuelo, I don't eat cheese anymore. It's bad for my brain. Abuelo chuckled. Who told you that, he asked. My friend, said Juana, I won't eat cheese, Mama, because I want to go to Mexico City to study. Mexico City, said her mother. My teacher said that there is a big university there. It has a library with thousands of books. Imagine. Only boys can go to the university, Juana Inez, said her mother. The next night, Juana marched in to dinner, dressed like a boy. <laughs> Juana Inez kept her mother. What are you doing? I'm practicing so I can go to the university in Mexico City when I'm older. I want to go there to the library. I want to study about music and plants and the stars. I want to write poems. You know girls are as smart as boys, Mama. Juana Inez, you are stubborn as a rose thorn. For the last time, only men can go to university, said her mother firmly. 
you are a very lucky girl who already knows how to read and write. Girls need to help at home. But mama, girls can do more than spin and sew, said Juana. We can study and prove all we know. When Juana was eight, she ran into the house calling, mama, look, look, I wrote the best poem for the contest at church. I won the prize, a book. Now I can start my own library. Books were Juana's teachers. Month after month, she studied Abreu's books over and over again. She said, por favor, mama, please let me go to the Mexico City library to study. Finally, when Juana was about 10 years old, her mother sent her to live with her aunt and uncle in Mexico City. How exciting it was to arrive in the big city. Juana looked at all people. She listened to the many languages and she smiled when she rode by the palace and the university. She wrote poems about all she saw. Tia Maria, she said to her aunt, tanto que ve, que voy a ser. So much to see. What will I be? Since girls could not attend the university, Juana's aunt and uncle hired a tutor to teach her at home. Senor, I hear Latin at church. Will you teach me Latin? She asked him. Juana wanted to learn other languages too. She cared more about her books than her looks. Tapping her head, she said, why decorate the outside of my head if the inside is empty? Always curious about everything, Juana Ines bubbled with questions. How do they build such huge churches? What languages are those people seek speaking? When she saw nuns in their long habits, she asked, Tia Maria, what do nuns do? Can they study and read all day in the convents? When Juana and her aunt walked by the palace, Juana said, who lives in the palace and what do they do there? There are gardens, said her aunt, and a library. The viceroy and his wife live there. They visit with their guests and they send letters to the king of Spain. Poets visit and there are wonderful plays and concerts. I want to live there, said Juana. I can write plays and songs. Un canto, las canto. I'll sing them a song. I will study very hard, said Juana Inez. And then I can write better poems for birthdays and feast days like I write for my family and Tia. Then I can read in the large library. Juana did study. Her aunt and uncle took her to the palace. So you are the young lady who reads so many books and writes wonderful poems, said the viceroy's wife. You are beautiful as a rosebud, Juana Inez. Would you like to live here at the palace as a lady in waiting? Juana blushed because of all the people looking at her. The morning, she finally walked into the large palace library. She was once again quiet as a turtle. At last, so many books, a huge room full of treasures. Now she could come every day and touch the many books, slowly read the titles. She read books about calendars and stars, about women in the Bible and Greek and Roman stories. Juana wrote plays and songs, and soon many people in the palace heard she liked word games. They came and asked her to write poems and riddles for them. She studied a rose and said, look, its thorns are its prickly royal guards. And she was still curious. Why does a rose live longer when it's cut, I wonder? She laughed and teased. If men learn to cook, will they write a better book? One day, the viceroy said, Juan Inez, I tell scholars how smart you are, but they don't believe me. I want you to prove it. I've invited 40 scholars. They're going to ask you questions. Members of the court will watch. If that is your wish, senor, said Juana. My head has always been full of questions. I started reading when I was three so I could find the answers. Three, said the viceroy's wife. Yes, Juana laughed. I followed my big sister to school. Juana wondered what the 40 scholars would ask her. Her head felt full of languages, names, numbers, poetry, and music. The scholars arrived in their long black robes, looking very serious. <laughs> they began to ask Juana difficult questions about triangles, about painting, about famous men, and even about the movement of the sun. Juana answered every question. When the scholars finished, they nodded. Juana Inez smiled and said, yes, girls can do more than spin and sew. We can study and prove all we know. The viceroy's wife hugged her and handed her a beautiful red rose. 
Juana liked living at the palace and she liked her many friends there, but she wanted to keep learning. She needed quiet to think and write with her quill. She became a nun and she changed her name to Sor Juana Inez de la Cruz. She liked the quiet of the convent. She added books to her library until it became one of the largest libraries in all of the Americas. In her long habit, she prayed and studied and wrote letters, religious songs, plays, and poems. Her friends came to visit her and she laughed and told them riddles. Here, Soana Inez, said her good friends one day, a book by one of the major poets of the Americas. Soana slowly unwrapped the package and her name was on the cover. She hugged the book with both hands. That night, Sorwana added her own book of poems to her treasured library.